In this episode, I have a Sony CDP C500. This is a five disc carousel type CD player that Sony had a number of years ago. This one's about 31 years old as of the date of recording or repairing it. Um, yeah, it might surprise you what the problem is. Um, initially, I thought maybe a pickup problem, but uh, once I got into it, I realized that wasn't the case. Let's check it out. This is a Sony five disc changer. It also is compatible with the three inch CDs. It's a CDP C500. I have no idea. I was told it does not work. I don't hear anything. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to pull this one apart and see what's going on with this one. Two screws in the back and the top cover will just slide back and lift off of this one to reveal the mechanism. The five just changers were actually probably one of the more popular of the changers for people just because you could get a full evening's music without and, and still have accessibility. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the, I mean, I like the 200 disc and bigger changers myself because I can keep all my entire uh, collection in them. But a lot of people like these uh, smaller five disc changers just because they could load up five discs and you were good for the night. You put it on shuffle play and you were good for a good evening of, of, of listening and you could easily change the disc and you always knew what you had in it because you could just open it and close it. was easy to change the disc. Some of them had disc exchange features on it too. This one does not. So this one I believe stops when it's playing, but it's not playing now. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this is I'm gonna check the laser. And it looks like the laser lens is lifting, but it may not be moving. The, the chuck may not be moving. So we're gonna check this first of all and see. We'll put a disc in first and see if it even spins. That's all it does. Interesting. Okay, so it's not reading the disc properly. Looks like. Let's uh, check out the laser and see whether the laser is sticking and maybe give it a clean and see whether that'll resolve it. Something's going on with this one. So I'm going to remove the bottom from this unit. can't but I can get to the uh, the switch on this unit that sometimes gives trouble there's a couple of switches on here that I can get to from the bottom of the unit and these switches are used to signal when the disc is loaded properly I'm curious as to whether um, it may be a problem with one of these switches uh, laser block is here. I can get to the I can get to the rails to grease the rails from here, so I can actually do that without removing the pickup. But I think I want to investigate these switches because these switches here have been known to cause problems. So let's just go that route first. As I say, this was weird, doing weird things like it was dropping the disc and reloading it, almost like it. Uh, it had a switch type problem 
and this one uses these I think this is this encoder switch on this one it's like a, a leaf switch I think this one's a switch on this one should be able to pop that out there we go here yeah it's got these silly switches these switches cause all kinds of issues whenever that you encounter these type of switches there's going to be another one of them over here and i bet you 10 to 1 that that's the problem with this unit and it's nothing other than a couple bad switches what is this one here this one's just a this one's just a regular uh, switch. There's two of them here, right? These Alps switches do give us problems. So I think what I want to do is I want to clean both of these switches just to make sure there's not a problem there. Just because of the way this thing was acting when it was uh, trying to load that disc, dropping the disc and so forth again. So let's get the cleaner out. I'm just going to use Neutral on this. We'll spray some cleaner into these switches. And then I'll test it before doing anything else and see whether it'll work at that point. I was considering, you know, lubing the, uh, the transport here, but I don't even, I'm not even going to go to that trouble. At least not yet. Let's do the switches first. I'm just gonna put on some gloves. I don't feel like getting uh, I don't feel like getting oil all over my hands here right now. And with this whole COVID thing, I go through several sets of gloves a day at work, and uh, I mean sometimes they get torn and ripped and stuff. But when they aren't, I generally just keep them for use because at work I'm chances are I'm not in contact with anybody that's got COVID. Um, the gloves themselves are clean. I just throw them instead of throwing them in the garbage. I just throw them in a box and let them sit there for several days, and then I uh, bring them home and use them around the house here because they have us replace them all the time. So in this situation, where I'm going to be working with this oily cleaner, neutral, I'm going to uh, keep my hands nice and clean today. I know these switches may be hard to get into some of these ones. This one shouldn't be too bad. But the other one, I may have to take it apart. But that one there should be good. enough to get the cleaner into here. Snap the switch back together. I didn't want the spring coming out of there, but I did want to get the cleaner right down into the switch. And then again with this one here, we're going to spray it down into the switch itself and activate it. These little blue switches give lots of trouble. So there is a, a good possibility that that's where the problem is with this one is these switches are, are bad, or were bad. I should have solved it now if it was just dirty. Now I just gotta get this thing back where it goes in here. contaminated my screwdriver so I'm gonna end up getting oil on my hands anyway once I take these gloves off
wire fits in like that. Okay, let's try this thing. I think these connections look okay here. Let's try this thing and see if it works. So let me just plug it in. Power the unit up first. Okay, we'll try a disc in this thing now and see whether it does anything more than it did last time. Remember, the only thing I've done is clean those switches out. Hmm. That does appear to be working. And so it's going to look for other discs, even though there are no discs in it. I guess this one doesn't detect whether there's any discs there or not, unless it does a full rotation. looking to see if there's a disc in that position then it goes out on the front here it still thinks that there might be a disc in position number five and now disc position number five is gone so now it'll only try to search out tracks on number one disc number one pick up right at the very end here. It turns shuffle off. Oh, here we go. Shuffle one disc or all discs. Oh. Um, if I turn off shuffle, it'll just stay on this one disc. This appears to be working. So it looks like that was the fault. Is those switches are used to determine if the uh, disc tray is in or out and uh, what position it's in. I hear a lot of noise as the disc is rotating. I guess that's just the gears. Yeah, it's working. That's good. I like that. Um, 
not too bad a repair. I mean, there's really not a lot that goes wrong with these things anyway. You get the odd time to get a laser pickup that's bad. It's squeaking a bit. The tray is squeaking a bit. Let's see if we can see where it's squeaking. Plastic on plastic rubbing somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to be too worried about that because this is my unit. It's, it's going to go up for sale. I won't make more than 20 bucks or 30 bucks on something like this anyway, so I don't know that I'm too worried about the squeaking. As long as it plays. It might be worthwhile to uh, just put a bit of grease on the uh, on the gears there just to, you know, make sure that they're not going to be a problem. I will clean off the laser. Just wipe that off. Any dust that's on there. So this one doesn't appear to have any old grease on it. It doesn't look like it was ever greased. So this will be relatively easy to put some grease on. It's going to put some grease onto the rail here and onto the gears and let it work its way in when I spin them. Again, we don't need to put a lot of grease in. Uh, too much grease is worse than not enough. It actually will attract, if you have too much grease in it, it'll actually attract uh, dirt. So we don't want to put too much on there. I just want to put enough so that things won't stick. I'm almost out. I'm getting low. I've got three more packs of this stuff. And then I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out. I know you can still buy this stuff, but uh, I'm not going to go and buy a big jar of it for 50 or $60 or something. You know, the, the small packs have suited me well over the years because I don't go through a lot of this stuff. Be nice to know where that squeak's coming from, but I don't see it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put this thing together and uh, we're going to leave it at that because I think that's all I'm going to do on this. Oh, I'll dust off the inside of it as well, but uh, as far as uh, doing anything more on this unit, it's working.
and really that's all I can ask for is that it works. It's uh, you know it's pretty old, and um, it's not like I'm gonna get a lot of money to sell this thing because uh, these things don't. You don't get a lot of money for these things. You know I I just sold a stereo today. One that I serviced a while back it was that Panasonic. Uh, I think it was the three disc, three disc unit uh, with the two cassettes. It was the one with the the uh, switches for the two cassette decks were bad, and uh, I just sold that thing today. I got like twenty bucks for it. I didn't pay anything for the thing, so it, you know it didn't cost me anything, and I've, I've made more than twenty bucks on the video that I made when I repaired the tape decks on it. Um, but uh, it went to somebody who went to a lady that uh, just went through a, a divorce I guess or a breakup and uh, he took the stereo so they had no music so she was basically looking for something to use just as a radio and I said well here it's got it's got CD players and it's got a three disc CD player and uh, two cassette decks and the response I got was I don't care if the cassette decks work or not or if the CD player works or not all I want it for is to play the radio well, the radio works great there you go so I got that out of my hair and that's what I'll do with this is I'll put this one up for sale try and get you know, 20 or 30 bucks for it or whatever I can get for it. Might get a little more because this is a, a five disc changer. People tend to like these changers so I might make it might make a little bit more on this than I say with a single disc but uh, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna go up for sale and someone else is gonna end up with this unit and they're gonna get hopefully years of service out of it. So I'll just dust off the inside here. load a couple discs in it. I'm going to uh, put a few discs in this thing, just let it play for a while, make sure everything's okay. And if it all plays fine without uh, any problems, then I'm going to sell it. So I'm going to load it up with five discs. I've got to find some more discs here. And uh, we'll let the thing play. Oops. I think I have five discs in here. Four anyway. Oh yeah, I got some crap. I got I got some garbage discs that somebody gave me. I'll put them on. They're classical garbage, but just so I can load it up and let it play. Okay, uh, that's it. This is uh, done. I'm going to leave this thing play for a while and then put it together and uh, put it up for sale. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.